You guys remember this viral video of this lady on a plane last year? Stop the She said that mm -mm is not real. She went on later to change her story during Inside Edition. She talks about the fact that this guy potentially stole her AirPods. And so she was saying that he was fake. He wasn't being real. But how many of us really believe that story? I, for one, do not. And then there's been other instances just like this. Remember the guy that was the English dude who was on a plane saying that he was sitting next to somebody who told him that he was dead to look him up. So he Googled him only to find out that this guy had an obituary picture up. He comes up and freaks out they have to tackle him and hold him down on the ground then there's this lady who gets up and begins to manifest on a plane when finally a christian woman stands up and begins to preach on this plane watch this <laughs> So what's really going on with all these manifestations? It seems like these spirits are trying to come out and reveal themselves. And people say, well, you know, manifestations of demons, that's not real. That's just something that people make up. And if that's your thought on this, I'll get to you in just a second. But let's talk about a story that's recently come out in the news that most of us have heard about. But in case you haven't, let me share this with you, which I believe is really a normalization that they're trying to create in the minds of people to make people comfortable and familiar with the demonic and what's taking place in the supernatural carrying over into the natural. This particular particular article comes out of USA Today and it says, I freaked out. Man with demon face syndrome hopes story can help other patients. And as you can see here on the screen, these faces look straight up demonic. The pulled back skin looks like they have the gills on the side of the face. The ears? I mean, come on. You mean to tell me that someone's really seeing people like this? It goes on to say, Victor Shara has always been a social person, but for the past three years, he found himself with more withdrawn. That's because ever since he woke up one day in November 2020, Shara, 59, remember his age, has been seeing people's faces distorted, or as he put it, like demons. I woke up one morning that way and freaked out, Shara told USA Today. And it's a rare condition in which they say that causes a person to see severely stretched features with deep grooves on the forehead, the cheeks, the chin according to a study recently published in The Lancet. So let's see how they're actually going to explain why he has this and what's going on. It says the condition varies from person to person, but is characterized by a distortion of faces, including features appearing droopy, smaller, larger, stretched, or in a different position. Well, let's get into the specifics of what Shara's situation is. Remember, he's age 59. It says Shara said he had an injury 17 years ago that required him to be hospitalized. In 2007, while working as a long haul driver, the door of his trailer became jammed. As he tried to unjam the handle, he fell back and hit his head on the concrete. Mind you, there's a lot of NFL players who are getting rocked all the time, CTE injuries, etc. Have any of these players who are getting physically hit in the head all the time, ever coming out and saying they're seeing people's faces like demons? It says, according to the study, the head injury is one possible explanation for Shara's PMO. The other is a carbon monoxide poisoning, which Shara experienced just four months before his symptoms started. So you're gonna tell me he had carbon monoxide poisoning or he hit his head in the concrete and all of a sudden, 17 years later or four months later, he's starting to see demon faces? Do any of you actually believe that who are watching? If you do, if you don't, Drop it in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. I got to hear this real time from other people so it's not just some echo chamber. So what are my thoughts on all of this? There is a collective effort to take what's happening in the supernatural and make it normal. In the sense of taking these things or beings or people, maybe they're manifesting, maybe these are fallen creatures, and people say, well, the Nephilim don't exist anymore. They were wiped off the face of the earth. But spirits don't die. So could it be that some of those people lived again because they talk about it later on in scripture? And even if it's not Nephilim, we know that people still manifest. And to get some insight into this, let's look at Luke chapter 4. It says in verse 33, and in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And while this demon was actually trying to reveal Jesus' identity, it says that Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace, or basically shut your mouth, quit talking. 
and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. So there was this subduing of the spirits, just like you saw this lady. She gets up. This lady's manifesting, going all crazy. This lady comes up and starts preaching on this plane, and all of a sudden, the spirit of God that's on her subdues this demonic spirit in this woman, literally shutting her up. So just like there could be manifestations or someone who opens themselves up to the enemy to come in and to manifest these things, we can also, as believers, open ourselves up to the spirit of God to be used to have peace, to have joy, but to also have power. And while there is the scripture in 1 Corinthians 2.14 that says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. I do believe we're in a day and age where a lot of the spiritual things are beginning to be revealed and people just don't know how to process them because they don't understand them. So therefore you have these people seeing these other people manifest because something's inside of them coming out and they don't necessarily know how to process it. So they freak out. And this has been happening more and more. And so a lot of you might be asking yourself, how does this connect to everything that's going on right now in the world? How does this connect to all the other chaos that's happening simultaneously? Is this just some other bit over here by itself? No. And let me show you how that's connected right now. Ephesians 6 12 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And these principalities, these powers, it's not in the power of man in Putin, in Voldemort Zelensky, it's not in Xi Jinping in China, it's not in Biden, it's not in Trump. These aren't the people that we're truly wrestling against. What's taking place in Israel, in Gaza, Iran, etc. We are not wrestling or battling against flesh and blood. That is not the true enemy here. While these people are allowing themselves to be opened up, it is the things that are operating inside of them from a spiritual standpoint. This spirit of antichrist, this antichrist mentality that is seeking to depopulate humanity, that is seeking to attack people and silence speech, that is seeking to demoralize, tearing apart ethics, morals, integrity, honesty, that is seeking to traffic kids and the sexualization of children, the perversion of minds and psychological operations and drug use and alcohol, the tactics that they're pushing on you through TV shows and through music. It is the spirit that's operating inside of these people that is manifesting outwardly. So while we may look at these instances of these people on these planes and this guy seeing demonic faces and we say, well, that's a demonic manifestation. That's crazy. Well, it's just as crazy within these people in whom these spirits are operating from these dark places and spaces as well. It's just that these things are a lot more tactical and strategic. And so you're not even aware of what's really happening to you. And it's just like Eve when she was in the Garden of Eden and the serpent came to speak with her. She thought she was just simply having a conversation. It seemed fairly logical the way that it was presented to her. Yet she didn't understand that there was a manifestation that was taking place and something was trying to attack her. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, high places of authority, high places of politics. And so we have to be aware of it. But remember, only the spiritual mind can discern the spiritual things of God. And this is why it's so important for you and I to be tapped in, connected to the source, connected to Jesus. Christ is king. I love this scripture so much. James 2.19, thou believest that there is one God, thou dost well. The devil also believes and trembles. The New Living Translation says it this way. Even the demons believe and they tremble in terror. The New Century Version even puts it beautifully. It says, but the demons believe that too and they tremble with fear. I love how Isaiah 14 puts it. And I love verse 16 so much. It says, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Basically asking, is this the guy? Are you kidding me? This is the one that we were afraid of? Trust me right now. You want to serve Christ. You want the power from on high. You want that joy and that peace. You want that eternal security to know that heaven is your home. Don't be deceived by the temporary pleasures of sin. The Bible says that last only for a season. It says that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He'll give you what you want right now temporarily, but he wants everything in return eternally. 
And this is where that spiritual discernment needs to be turned on into your mind. There is a real God, but there is also a real devil and he's after you. And while he may be the one we look at to say, is this the guy? When you don't have the power of Christ living inside of you, a life that's submitted to Jesus, what ends up happening is you become susceptible to all those tactics. You are not covered. You are not protected. And you are allowing yourself to be open to attack. Let me ask you a question. If you knew you had to go to battle and there were two armies on each side of a field, would you walk into that field completely unprotected and unarmed? Of course not. That would be insanity. It would be a death wish. So why are you walking through this life unprotected, unyielded to Christ? You need to have the full armor of God. And I love this coming out of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. And this is for the believer. If you will turn to Christ and you will submit yourself to God, I'm telling you, you will have the armor. It says here, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this darkness and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. 13 says, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You are unprotected, but there's armor that's waiting for you. When you submit your life to Christ, you are covered by his blood. You are protected by the Holy Spirit. You are overshadowed by the angels that he sends to watch over you. And this will give you the power from on high to go against and block out all those fiery darts. The Bible is the word of God. It's his promises to you. It's your strength. He gives you spiritual discernment to see and open your eyes to things that you were not aware of before that are in the physical realm, but operating under the guise inside of people supernaturally. So you can look at everything that's going on right now in this world, including these people, these manifestations, all this stuff, war, chaos, genocide, agendas, narratives, tactics, words, all these things that are taking place, fear mongering, etc. But when you give your life to Christ and you submit yourself to him, there's an opening. Your eyes are opened, not to the fear, but to see what's really going on and who's really in charge and where the power actually lies. And what ends up happening is when that takes place, you gain that peace, you gain that strength, you gain that steadfastness. That even in the midst of all the chaos that's going on in the world, you are able to take a seat and relax. All hell could be breaking loose, but as David says in Psalms 23, and I love this so much, listen to this. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Woo! I'm telling you right now, that's what you need, a table in the presence of my enemies. There's a table prepared for you, symbolic of sitting down to have a meal while all the chaos might be going on around you because it can't touch you. Psalms 139 says this, if I go up into the heavens, you are there. And even if I make my bed in hell, you are there. And that's the power of the coverage and the protection and the love and the peace and the grace, the favor that you get when your life is submitted to Jesus Christ. So real quick, before this nightcap is over on this Friday night session, I just want to give all of you the opportunity who do not know Jesus Christ to get to know this savior that I'm telling you about right now, that over 2000 years ago came to this earth in the form of a man, died on a cross, rose again on the third day. We just celebrated Resurrection Sunday. And when he rose again in power and glory, when he put those sins to rest, the things that we've sinned and done to separate us from a relationship with God, He now gave us eternal life through Jesus Christ. John 14 verse 6 says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. And John 3 16, one of the most famous scriptures of all time, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's the life he wants to give you right now. So if you're watching this, this is simple. God keeps it simple. That's what's so beautiful. I'm going to pray a simple prayer with you, and I want you to just close your eyes and repeat this after me. Mean it from your heart. And right now, he's going to come down and touch you. The Holy Spirit's going to be all over you. If you get goosebumps, you get tinglies, you feel some type of way, just understand that's the Spirit of God all over you. Repeat this with me right now, if you would. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I am a sinner and I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Take the weight of my sin and give me your peace, your joy, your strength, your power, and this full armor to protect me from all that's happening in the world right now and whatever may happen and what may come in the future. I surrender my life to you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer right now, the Bible says that all heaven rejoices for you. If you want to find out more about the follow-up steps to connecting with other believers, getting a Bible, locking into a church, DM me. I want to talk to you. I want to connect with you. Or you can also join the inner circle that we have. The link's in my bio. I thank you so much for watching this. And it's only up from here because this life is simply a blip on the eternal map and we are headed to glory. Jesus said, where I am, there you are will be also we have an eternal hope in heaven that no matter what happens in this life what comes next is glory and eternity with the king of kings love you guys so much until next time continue to fight those psyops